Welcome to the big island of Hawaii in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. We're looking here at the Helena Pali Road. This is a uh, paved narrow road that heads out to a nice overlook over the ocean. This part of the park really doesn't get visited a whole lot and yet there's some real amazing geologic features here. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to explore one of the ways in which the Kilauea volcano is slumping into the sea and some of the structures that accommodate that motion. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey here on the Big Island of Hawaii, checking out the geology, waiting for another eruption, which might begin in a few days, and hopefully it'll be, it'll happen when I'm here. But in the meantime, let's check out some of these cool features here. We're going to be looking at a series of structures that accommodate some of the motion on the south flank of Kilauea as it slides towards the ocean. So this dramatic break in slope here, you can see the, the lavas here on the left where my hand is are higher than the ones down here on the right. That's a net displacement, displacement of about 30 feet, 10 meters or so. You can see the road crossing it just beyond. This is a fault scarp. This is actually the trace of one of the faults in the Kauai fault system. It's a series of faults on the south flank of the Kilauea volcano. And these faults have formed because the entire mass of Kilauea is not supported on its south side. It's just open ocean. These volcanoes in Hawaii tend to be built up of rubble and uh, pillow lavas at their base. And so they're in inherently unstable and this is where the volcano is actually sliding seaward and in the process that extension creates these large fault systems. It's also a place where magma can sometimes inject itself like it does along the east rift zone uh, and so you have sort of two reasons here why these fault systems exist and why they remain active. But let's go ahead and look at this in a little bit of detail here. We can see uh, the lava flows here at the top drop down. You can see all the boulders and rubble down here where there have been earthquakes and movement along this fault that have just broken up all this rocks. And then you can see a continuation of those lava flows down here at the base of the hill. These lavas here are about 600 years old from Kilauea. Looking further to the east, we can see the trace of the fault system extending that way. These things run for miles and miles across the landscape. In fact, the only reason the road actually comes up and is able to come up and over this thing is because the fault changes its character a little bit this way. So let's walk over here towards the road and see what happens to this fault as we explore it further to the west along its what we call strike. And we'll see that there's something really remarkable here that's actually pretty common with uh, normal fault systems that propagate in one direction. Uh, we've got some nice pohoi hoi ropes here in this older lava flow, very nice. And then you can see again, the big drop off here, um, down and across to the other side where we have those lava flows continuing. But a big fault scarp and a big kind of rubble zone here. You can see these blocks are kind of teetering on the edge, ready to go at any moment. Could be the next, you know, fairly small earthquake that sends those tumbling down with the other ones there. Uh, these ohia trees along the rim are probably in trouble as well. But if we move down to the road and take a good look at the fault, we'll see that it has some really different characteristics on one side of the road versus the other. So let's give you a nice view here of the things we've been looking at. So here now we're looking from the road along the strike or the direction of the faults. So you can see the, the upside here on the south side and the north side is the downside. So you can see the all the rubble here. And then, so it's a clear break, right? You've got higher rocks over here and these rocks over here. Um, and then when we look over and swing around to the west side of the road, we don't see the same type of setting. We can see the lava flows actually form a smooth ramp that comes down and then turns back to horizontal. So in other words, these lava flows, which are nearly horizontal, are ramped up where the fault scarp is, but they're not broken. They're more or less unbroken. And then as we get here near the top, they go back to being 
more or less horizontal. So this shape that they're making here is what we call a monocline. And so what this suggests possibly is as we go in this direction, this fault uh, may be dying out a little bit. It may be not have as much displacement over here. So as uh, the movement occurred along the fault in the other direction to the east, it was enough to break the lava flows and displace them. Whereas here we're seeing these lava flows still in, in a large part, largely unbroken as we look this way. Here's a better regional view of exactly how the fault we're looking at there in this video fits in with the bigger picture of the structures and the volcanic features around the Kilauea volcano. We can see the summit region up here, the east rift zone extending off here on the east side of the volcano, the southwest rift zone here. But in this area in between, you can see some of these uh, lines running across the landscape here. These are the fault system. This is the Kauai fault system that is sometimes called the connector faults between the southwest rift zone and the east rift zone. Remember that the south flank of the volcano is unsupported, and so this is where we see movement towards the sea as the volcano just starts to slide gravitationally due to its own sort of bulk and mass. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to where we actually filmed the video here. You can see again some of these fault scarps cutting across the landscape here. The one in particular that we're looking at with the video uh, lies right here along the roadway. And notice that this fault system, which is quite continuous to the east, it comes from all the way over here on the east rift zone. And then right about here where we're filming the video, uh, where I just shot that last scene on the ground, notice that that fault system, which breaks the rocks here on the east side, where it's a definitive fault scarp, uh, you can see where it becomes a monocline here on this side of the road. And then as you trace that out, you can just see that fault basically dissipate as it sort of terminates here, uh, somewhere out here in this region. You can also see this is about where another fault system just to the north starts to pick up. So it's accommodating the displacement that this, uh, this one has you know, failed to accomplish. There's another fault system here that's a continuation that goes off out here to the Southwest Rift Zone. So these are the connector faults of the Kauai fault system. Pretty cool stuff. And something, um, actually the research I did down in Baja was a similar kind of feature, not in these types of rocks at all, but it was where the displacement was the greatest. We saw faulting and where at the tips of that fault at either end of it, where the displacement was a lot lower is where we saw these kind of monocline structures here. As a quick aside, the structural feature we're looking at there in Hawaii is quite similar to the ones I studied in Baja, California for my master's research. This is a paper that came from our findings there. And if we scroll down past the title page there, there's actually a nice diagram here. It kind of shows exactly what we're seeing there in Hawaii. So you can see in the cross-sectional view here, the normal fault system at depth, which is controlling the movement and the extension of the rocks above. You can see here showing the shaded region, the area where the surface faulting is taking place. And you can see that the displacement along the fault dies down in this case, as you move off to the left, reaches a tip point here, but then over here we would have a monocline. So the monocline would actually exist uh, beyond the zone where the surface faulting takes place. And we used um, what we discovered there in Baja to kind of understand this in a little bit more uh, detail and really, I think, uh, sort of lay some of the groundwork, or at least the early stages of groundwork for understanding how normal faults actually can be um, and also have these monoclines in them as they're propagating upwards. Here's another diagram from later in the paper, but you can see in this first one here in the cross-section view on the bottom left, uh, the main normal fault kind of propagating upwards towards the surface. We've got some layers here shown in gray. As the normal fault gets closer to the surface, the monocline above it steepens a little bit, a little bit, and then eventually the monocline is, uh, or is fully breached by the fault system in that location but you can see here um, it's a little bit messy here but in between these two offset faults we would have a little bit of monocline, monocline there as well uh, so anyway just don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole there but this place in hawaii just had some real cool parallels with the structures i looked at down in baja so pretty neat stuff um, really interesting structures here and one of the big players on the big island of hawaii 
when it comes to uh, producing earthquakes and also just ground movement. The movement here of the ground um, is measurable. I can, you can actually see the fault trace. Let's see if the zoom works here. So you can see the fault scarp extending way out there uh, into the distance. So some of these things run for a considerable distance. Awesome stuff. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on this fun little excursion here on the island of Hawaii. Appreciate your support of the channel. Hope you learned something with me. I love exploring these places uh, with you, learning as we go, and just discovering all of the Earth's secrets together. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.